So it's been a couple days since the June Nintendo Direct. And while me and some friends put together a pretty lengthy discussion talking about every game that was shown off during that presentation, watching an hour long video isn't for everyone. And I've had some new thoughts on some of this stuff that I kind of want to go over and and some new opinions about some things that I had said in that video that made me seem way more negative about a certain game. So what's up everybody? Welcome to that Nintendo show. If you enjoy this video, leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new here. I want to start with the one that in my opinion was probably the biggest announcement of the show. Everyone's talking about it, but the legend of Zelda echoes of wisdom. This was probably the only game during that whole showcase to where I literally lost my mind. It was so exciting. I actually put a video out not too long ago talking about hints that there might be a playable Zelda in her own game coming soon. I never could have guessed that it was going to take this form, though. I was thinking more of like a 3D Zelda game where you're just doing more puzzle related stuff than combat. And Nintendo said, no, we got our own thing, which is does borrow some of that idea, but I think this works a lot better in the 2D Zelda format that we've seen with this in the Link's Awakening remake. But a lot of that choose how you play that was in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is starting to make its way over to 2D Zelda. And that's exactly what that format needed. Regardless of whether it's, you know, you're playing as Link or playing as Zelda or whoever. But there's a lot of charm that's going into this. And you can see some of those elements from the 3D Zeldas of past couple years make their way over. This is probably one of the most hyped up games to end the current Switch's generation with. One of the other ones I'll get to in a second. But it's so exciting that we're pretty much having in some capacity a Zelda game every year. And... I'm super excited to see what they end up doing with Echoes of Wisdom. I'm not going to break down the trailer or anything. There are other more qualified YouTube channels that do that kind of stuff. But just seeing things from a different perspective. And yes, the jokingly how you could literally destroy a town with just putting beds everywhere. Or just using beds to solve puzzles. But it goes deeper than that though. Like... Yes, you could joke about that, but she could also get water and fire and stuff. So she's pretty much like a sorceress in this game. And I don't know. There's just so much you could do with that. I don't want to keep rambling about it. But Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is probably the perfect 2D Zelda game to send off this current console generation. And I'm super excited to play it. Next, I want to talk about Mario and Luigi Brothership. I did talk about this in the longer cut of this, but... I really thought that we were just never going to get another Mario and Luigi RPG game. When Alpha Dream closed, it was like, okay, sure, Nintendo could pick this back up. But I just never thought that it was going to happen or it was going to happen way longer down the line than this. This really has been the year of Mario RPGs. Because by the time this game has come out, we will have gotten the Mario RPG remake, the Thousand Year Door remake, and now this. And I hope that these games sell well so Nintendo sees that this is the kind of game we want. I know that the Mario and Luigi series has got their own, not as, I'm trying to think of the word to say, not as good game, I guess. Paper Mario definitely does. We don't need to spend any time talking about Sticker Store. But this is kind of like a return to form type of Mario RPG. And it's a new game. We got two remakes. Now we're getting a new game. So I hope everyone enjoys it and supports the game. So that way we'll keep getting more of these in the future. I'm a little iffy on the art style. But I think it's just because I've never seen them in this art style before. I'm not saying it's bad or anything. But just yeah, it, this is going to be... It's going to be so awesome when this comes out. This is like their big holiday game. So anyway, I'm super excited for this one. I think this is just going to be an absolute hit whenever this comes out. Uh, the one that I really wanted to spend some time on, and the one that I dogged a lot in the longer version of this, is Super Mario Party Jamboree. The minute that I saw the word Super Mario Party on the screen, instead of Mario Party Superstars or something else, 
I immediately kind of fell off because for Super Mario Party at the time when it came out was very like, OK, this is better than Mario Party 10. So I was willing to put up with a lot of the nonsense that this game did to the series. And then Superstars came out, and it's just a return to form Mario Party, and then you go back and look at how wrong some of the stuff was in Super Mario Party. One of those things that I always couldn't stand was every single minigame required motion controls. You couldn't use a Pro Controller or any other format of play. You had to use a Joy-Con, and everything required motion controls. One of the other things that I actually didn't could not stand in that game was the board design. I thought it was very boring. And the economy in the game was just not good. Like, stars cost 10 coins. That's not hard to get. Stars have always been 20 coins in Mario Party. Well, I'm happy to say that I was wrong to criticize this game as much as I did from the top. After people have gone back and analyzed this trailer a couple times, looks like a lot of the issues that I personally had with this game are gone. The big one... Stars are back to 20 coins. The boards look very unique. We're getting some more remasters of old boards. Uh, they've gotten rid of, of some of the other stuff that I didn't really care for. And yes, some of the mini games do require motion controls, but it looks like they don't all require them, which means there probably is an option to turn off motion control based mini games, or I'll just put up with it. I think it's right to have the inclusion of the motion control mini games, or even just allow the game to support it. But there are some people, myself included, who just can't stand them. And I, maybe I'm in the minority here with this, but I grew up with a Wii. I had it. I put up with that for as many years as I had that system. And I'm just over it. And I don't know if that just puts me like in a category of a of small amount of people or what but i'm cool with them being there but i'm also just more happy that they're optional to some capacity like skyward sword hd had motion controls in it and there was a couple times where i did mess around with it but i didn't have to and i think that's the way that motion controls should be implemented unless it's like a fitness game or something that's a little bit different donkey kong country returns hd I am indifferent to this. I'm haven't even played this one to begin with. It's been on two other systems that I've owned, but so for me personally, it's like, I've never even touched this. So this is like a new game to me, but to people who have been waiting and waiting for a new Donkey Kong game, it kind of is a slap in the face. But to the point that I made in the long discussion is that retro studios has done the Donkey Kong Country games that we've gotten in the past decade or so. And they've had their hands full recently with Metroid Prime 4 because they had to take over development of that game to get it to where we're finally going to see it come out next year. More on that in a minute. But I think in a way that that has hindered the development of a new Donkey Kong Country game. And maybe another studio that's taking up Donkey Kong Country is going to help the series as a whole, kind of like how Grezzo, who did the Link's Awakening remake, is now making their own new Zelda game. So the studio that's making Donkey Kong Country Returns HD is Forever Entertainment, who most recently worked on the remake of Panzer Dragoon, they came out a few years ago. But if all things go well with the Donkey Kong Country Returns port slash HD upscale or whatever to the Switch, then maybe the next Donkey Kong Country game is handed off to them. This is also something that's happened with Mercury Steam. They did the Samus Returns 3DS game and then all of a sudden they're making Metroid Dread. So that's not something that's out of the realm of possibility. And maybe that this will help retro because they've kind of turned now into like a metroid studio which obviously they should work on other projects too but this might just help get the load off their back to where they can do more experimental stuff going forward or hear me out one of them can start working on star fox because star fox needs some love you hear me anyway which brings me to metroid prime 4 now called metroid prime 4 beyond this has been a gameplay reveal in the making for seven years now up until this past Tuesday, all we've had is a logo 
and that the game restarted development five years ago. And yes, we still have to wait potentially another year or longer for this game to come out. I did want to bring up something, though, in how a lot of people, myself included, mentioned how this game looked in the trailer and how it almost looked like it was too good to be on the Switch. Or like the footage that they were using in the trailer was not Switch footage, but maybe Switch 2 footage instead. Well, Digital Foundry has come out and said that, no, this looks like it's running on the Switch, which this is supposed to be a system that is at its end of life. We're getting ready for a new generation. And the system still sometimes continues to exceed my expectations and blow me away with what it's capable of. Now, listen, we've only seen a minute and a half-ish of gameplay slash just footage of this game. Maybe they only showed the parts that run really well. Who knows? But I think that a lot of these major Switch games, I'm going to use Tears of the Kingdom as an example, really just push that hardware to its limit. And yeah, you occasionally have little stuttering frame rates and stuff like that, but they're not like to the point where you see some third party games run into issues or like you have to muddy the graphics so much that the games look or they run fine. This looks like this game's running at 60 frames per second. And if it's running on an actual switch, then it's supposed to output at 1080p. Most of these games output at only 900p, but still... If they use the right art style, you can't tell. Especially a lot of modern televisions kind of do their own little magic upscaling stuff anyway. So, all in all, if this is the final Nintendo Direct, that's specifically for the Nintendo Direct, this is going to be an absolute fantastic send-off for the system. Now, out of everything we've talked about, Metroid Prime 4 more than likely is going to have its own Switch 2 version. Could potentially even be a launch title for the Switch 2. All these other games, though, other than Donkey Kong, are coming out this holiday. And I think about other Nintendo systems and what games they ended off with. They haven't had games that are like on this caliber. All these games seem to be kind of like their, their B or C list games, but they're all just like super polished and ready to go. Overall, I think this is going to be a great final Nintendo Switch only year as we're looking ahead to what's going to be coming next. Obviously, more than likely, the Switch 2 will be backwards compatible. We'll be playing a lot of these games with maybe higher frame rates or better fidelity on the next system. But everything that they've showed just looks amazing. And this is on really old hardware. Switch is seven years old. The chip that's inside of it, I believe, is nine years old. And we're still getting games that look like this. I know I'm just hyping up this Nintendo Direct and everything. But yeah, just... I've been sitting on a lot of thoughts and just wanted to get them out there and hopefully make it something a little more digestible than shifting through a one hour long video. I hope you do check that out though. There's a lot of really good discussions on there about all the other games. These are the only games I'm going to talk about here because these are like the major Nintendo ones. But either way, let me know what you think about the games we talked about. Are you excited about what games are coming to the Nintendo Switch the rest of this year. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if this is your first time here, and I will see you soon with more Nintendo content.